the living God, who in the nativity of your Son established the beginning and fulfillment of all religion, grant, we pray, that we may be numbered among those who belong to him, in whom is the fullness of human salvation, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, it is the last hour, and just as you heard that the Antichrist was coming, so now many Antichrists have appeared. Thus, we know this is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not really of our number. If they had been, they would have remained with us. Their desertion shows that none of them was of our number. But you have the anointing that comes from the Holy One, and you all have knowledge. I write to you not because you do not know the truth, but because you do, and because every lie is alien to the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let, Let the, the heavens, heavens be, be glad, glad and, and the, the earth, earth rejoice. rejoice. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Announce his salvation day after day. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them. Then shall all the trees of the forest exult before the Lord. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. The Lord comes. He comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the world with justice and the peoples with his constancy. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Alleluia, alleluia. The Word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. To those who accept Him, He gave power to become the children of God. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. True light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him. But the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we saw his glory, the glory as the father's only begotten son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out saying, this is the one of whom I said, the one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace 
in place of grace. Because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only begotten Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The distance between the word becoming flesh and dwelling among us is incomparably greater, not even on the order of magnitudes, but on the order of existential order between the divine, the infinite, and the finite. That distance compared to the distance between the word becoming flesh and dying on the cross you can't compare the two. For Jesus to become flesh in of itself and subjecting himself to a world overcome by sin, the math alone would say he is being committed to a death. Now, he chose to accept that death at the hands of humanity. It was only inevitable insofar that he allowed himself to be crucified. And of course, that was his plan to further reveal and release the divine love that ultimately is expressed in the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for human souls in heaven. But often that first leap that took the co-eternal son of the eternal trinity and made him take on a human nature, not made, nobody makes God, but you know what I'm saying, that when he becomes incarnate, taking on human nature, phenomenal, a phenomenal leap, a phenomenal change. I'd love to be able to come up with a word that could begin to accurately describe the radical, the type of change in the order of creation, in the order of all of creation, that it took for Jesus to become flesh. This prologue, the very beginning of the gospel, according to John, is, is famous, and he, it's so beautiful and poetic that he says, he was always there. The word was with God. The word was God. All things came to be through him, always united with the Father who creates. Without him, nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life, both the first establishment of life and creation and the reestablishment of eternal life of grace through his life, death, and resurrection that once again reunites heaven and earth. What a wonderful Christmas reflection. This is this just profound commitment, all in divine commitment, divine commitment to one of his creations, to his creation's humanity. Um, perhaps our prayer today could say, hey, Lord, could you, you know, honor of your son, I mean, you're allowing us to come and ask you for life because you gave us life in Christ. And so you want us to ask these type of questions, to offer these type of prayers. But if somehow in today or in the days just ahead as we remain in the Christmas season, if you could give me insight, the profundity of, of you loving humanity so much that you would take on human nature and become one of us, then um, please, please illuminate the way, you know, please, because there's so much... And, and that's what's going to happen at the end of times. We're going to be un united fully with Christ in a more perfect way than we are now. And, and that's not theologically. We could talk about baptism, confirmation, all that, of course. But there's, a, there's the, the reality of the, of the final kingdom that we're meant, well, that in the fullness of life, we'll, we'll know Jesus. And we're going to be with him. And he's meant to be, I mean, he's our Lord incarnate. And so um, our prayer can be, Lord, help me to, to understand with greater insight, awareness, gratitude of, of that giant, giant transformation, that giant change that you brought into the world as you have chosen to become human. You chose to take on a human nature and become incarnate. Um, help me to build that sense of awe and wonderment that I should have when I reflect on that reality, when I think about, when I think about the magnitude of what you have given us and are currently giving us through our Lord Jesus. 
God is very good indeed. So let's stand and offer our prayers to the Lord. Gracious God, today we pray for Pope Francis. We pray for his vocation and ministry and service as the shepherd of your flock here on earth, as the vicar of Christ. For Pope Francis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to abortion, for a greater respect for life, from conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all families, especially those with young children, during these happy but yet also challenging days, that they might be strengthened with wisdom, understanding, um, courage, strength, and patience. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own continuing conversion, that as we celebrate this wonderful season of life, that we might continue to avail ourselves in prayer, um, submitting ourselves to the transforming grace of our Lord Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord and for all those making our Christmas novena, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious God, through the intercession of all the angels and saints, we ask that you hear the prayers we offer today and that you grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have this bread we offer to you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer to you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may faithfully be united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor. When our frailty is assumed by your word, not only does human mortality receive unending honor, but by this wondrous union, we too are made eternal. And so in the company of the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Andrew, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic 
and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating on this most sacred day, on which the Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, and your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and be counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, also your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, so you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those who would like to receive the Eucharist on the hand, I invite to come forward first in the communion line. You can begin by queuing up in the main aisle. For those who would like to receive on the tongue, we ask that you wait for all those to have received on, to receive, who wish to receive on the hand have received first. And thank you again for being mindful of your social distancing.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May your people, O Lord, whom you guide and sustain in many ways, experience both now and in the future the remedies which you bestow, that with the needed solace of things that pass away, they may strive with ever deepened trust for things eternal, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder that tomorrow, is the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God. It indeed is a holy day of obligation. Now, although we have been dispensed from having personally to attend a Mass, there still is a need for making a spiritual communion in honor of that day of obligation. So you could watch a Mass online, or you could make an offering such as a rosary and pray, a prayer similar to what we pray every, uh, every day here. Um, you can find many of them online. So spiritual, spiritual union with God, and you, you make that offering of whatever act it is, your, your expression of desire to be united with Christ. And so that is the way which we express our obligation, our happy, joyful, joyful obligation to the Lord on tomorrow, the feast day, the solemnity of Mary, Mother of God. We do have tonight a vigil mass at 5.30, um, a 7.30 morning mass, a 9.30 morning mass. The Dominican Rite will be at noon and the Spanish mass will be at two. So we do have Masses um, tomorrow for those who would like to attend. And of course, we'll live stream um, the 9.30, the Dominican Rite, and Spanish, uh, Spanish Masses. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God.